Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf and welcome to the final instalment in the Best Of series that ran all the way through Christmas until now. Today we are going to be doing a full face of the best of 2020. These are all of my ultimate favourite makeup products. However, if you would like me to do another video featuring all of my favourite affordable makeup products of 2020, do let me know in the comments section and I will get right on it. I am super excited today. I love you all, I really do, but this is the final video that I'm going to be filming before I break for Christmas because although it's January where you are, <laughs> it's still just before Christmas where I am. So I'm super excited to take a little bit of time off and spend it with the kids and Wes over Christmas and Christmas is my favourite time of year. I'm a bit of a giddy kid over Christmas. I love it. So I am super excited to film this today, turn everything off and put my feet up for a little bit. Anyway, let's crack on with this video. Like I said, these are all of my ultimate favourites. We're going to start off with eyeshadow, which is how I always like to do it. And throughout this video, I am going to be telling you a few tips and tricks on how I apply the products to get the best out of them and to make them look as seamless as physically possible. So if you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week. And I'm also on Instagram if you fancy checking me out over there, it's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I would really appreciate it if after you've watched this video, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, you hit that like button, also the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So I'm going to go straight into eye makeup to make sure that I don't get any fallout whatsoever and if I do, I can clean that up. Usually with the palette that I'm going to be using today, I don't get any fallout anyway, but you know, going on the safe side, just to be sure. I really, really hope that you've enjoyed this series. A lot of work went into this series, a lot of pre-planning went into this series, so I really hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Do let me know what you thought about the series in the comments section, and I hope you've all had an absolutely fantastic Christmas. <laughs> the year 2020 was seriously challenging for everybody, but I do understand that it was more challenging for some than others, and I just hope that I was able to shine a little bit of light into the darkness for everybody so you could just escape for that one millisecond for however long you chose to view. Um, I hope you were able to just escape the madness for just a small amount of time. Here's to 2021 being a better year for everybody. I'm keeping all fingers crossed. I'm going to go into my Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is my ultimate favourite eyeshadow palette of 2020. And I'm going to go into this shade here with my Refer 16 brush, which is in need of a little wash. I'm really sorry. I was supposed to clean all my brushes last night, but I was editing until about quarter past 11 at night and I just couldn't be bothered after that. I just thought, oh, sack it, I'll use dirty brushes. They have only been used once, but regardless, I usually wash them after every single use and I haven't done. So apologies for that. Please don't judge, we've all been there. So I'm gonna go into my little transition shade here which is called crease and I'm just tapping the brush in there and then I'm going to once again tap it on the area that I want it holding my brush right at the very end with only two fingers and then use little circular movements with just two fingers on the end of the brush if you use just two fingers on the end of the brush, you've got very little control over the brush. You can't put masses of pressure on the actual eyelid surface and therefore you get a much better blend. If you want to blend it even further, what I would do is go and get a completely clean brush and then just go around the top just to make sure it's completely seamless. 
So after I've done that, I'm gonna go into the shade Smoke down here with a smaller brush. This is my Refer 15 brush, which is just as bushy, but slightly shorter and not as domed. You can use any brush you like as long as it works for you. There is no law in makeup brushes and which one you can use for different things, but I like to use this. A lot of people use a flat brush for doing this sort of work. I just, it's not my preference. It's just not how I like to apply the shadows. So I'm just dotting that on. I'm not really blending that in too much. And as you can see, I'm holding my makeup brush a little bit lower because I want to be slightly more accurate. So I'll just whittle that in the crease, technical term, whittling. And then I'm gonna take the same brush that I put my transition shade in and once again, hold it right at the end of my brush and just blend that in. So when I'm blending eyeshadow, I always like to use circular movements and I like to go in the direction towards the outer portion of the eye so I don't blend in this direction, I blend in this direction because everything's blending outwards. When I move across to this eye, I do things completely in the opposite direction because I'm still wanting to blend it circular movements towards the outer edge. So I wouldn't blend in this direction, which is the same way that I did on this eye. I would blend completely the opposite way, but going towards the outer edge. That way you get a much better blend, in my opinion. Not everybody does it that way, you do it how you like to do it, but that's how I get the nicest blend for my eye shape. So once I've finished the outer edge, I am going to dip into this really beautiful rose gold pinky shade. I love this, I absolutely love this. This is supposed to be for the inner corner. I don't listen to what this is actually telling me to do. I love this shade for the center of the lid. And I'm just going to use my finger and just pat it where the outer edge shade, the more smoky shade, meets the inner portion of the lid, just to blend those two together. And then, I'm just gonna concentrate on the lower portion of the lid to make sure that I'm not getting it too high. Look how beautiful that is. It's so, so sparkly and pretty. Really, really lovely. When I move on to the other eyelid, I like to switch hands because I haven't got as much accuracy with this hand because my nose gets in the way. So I switch to using my left hand and I apply the center lid shade with my left hand on this side. That's how I'm gonna leave the shadow for now. I'm gonna move on to eyeliner. You may find that this is completely different to how you like to apply yours, but I'm gonna do the eyeliner now. You do it in whichever order you want to. This is the NYX Epic Ink. So if you use the lashes as a guide and just push the pen into the base of the lashes, it can really help you if you've got an unsteady hand and you'll end up getting a really thin defined line which can look a lot more natural. If you're after a much more exaggerated, dramatic eyeliner look, you're gonna have to draw this on and have a bit of a thicker line, but I'm gonna leave it at that today and keep it a little bit more natural. Although it's jet black. I mean, how natural can you get with jet black? Okay, I'm gonna move on to my color corrector, which is the Naked Skin from Urban Decay. I don't think you can get this anymore. It's so frustrating. They seem to be sold out everywhere. I'm not quite sure if they're discontinuing this line. If they are, I will be gutted. I will be really gutted. Not really for me because I've got a lot of this left, but I'll be gutted for everybody else because it's a really good color corrector. And uh, I don't find this drying. I'm gonna have to try and find a different color corrector for 2021 that I can share with everybody. I've heard the Bobbi Brown color corrector is really good, so I might give that a whirl. So I'm just 
dabbing this in place rather than swiping it because I want to be really accurate. And because I want to be really accurate, I'm holding my brush quite low down. So I'll let that dry down now and I am gonna move on to foundation. I love this foundation. I get a little heart flutters every single time I pick it up to use it. This is the Chantecai Future Skin Oil Free Foundation and it's just lovely. It really is lovely. I thought this would be quite drying on my skin with it saying that it's an oil free formula. I thought that it would be more suitable for anybody with an oily skin. <laughs> this is just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. I'm gonna use a brush just to dispense a little bit on the back of my hand. Then I'm gonna use a damp blending sponge. I've used brushes with this, I've used damp blending sponges. I think this foundation is beautiful either way, but um, I'm just gonna use a damp blending sponge today and then build this foundation up in the areas that I feel I need that little bit more coverage. The reason I like this foundation so much is it's not too glowy, but it's definitely not a flat matte. It's very, very skin-like. That is the only way that I can actually describe this foundation. It looks like skin. So once that's applied and I've got the coverage that I actually want, I've literally got one coat of this on, but I've just built it up slightly around these areas here where I still have that slight bit of acne scarring. I'm gonna let that settle in and whilst I'm doing that, I will do my under eye concealer. So I have two shades of the Pat McGrath concealer. I'm gonna use the darker of the shade to begin with, which is the shade L4. Now, if you only have one shade of concealer, don't worry, you don't need to go out and buy another shade. This is just how I prefer to do it. So I'm just gonna put a couple of dots in there and one or two on the outside as well. The reason I like to do the outside is I do have a little bit of discoloration there and also this is my opportunity to blend in my eyeshadow and just to clean the edge up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use a brush to just tidy that edge up just so it's a little bit cleaner. Then I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm just gonna pat that concealer over my darkness, anywhere that I actually want to conceal. And then start to pat it underneath my eye as well. And then once you've got a tiniest bit left on your brush, just start to feather that down a little bit, just so it's on the tops of the cheekbones. So easy to apply. Now I have heard a lot of people say that they like to leave their concealer sitting on the skin after they've applied it with a brush for around about one to two minutes just to let that start to harden before they go in with a blending sponge. That way they get a little bit more coverage out of the concealer. Not that I feel like you need more coverage out of this concealer, but if you feel like you do, that may be one of the ways that you can get that extra coverage. So once I've done with the darker concealer, which is the concealer that's the same shade as my foundation, I could leave it at that if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna take some of the L2, which is slightly paler, and add a little bit to this inner corner. And that just brings a little bit of brightness to the face. The powder that I am going to use, which is my ultimate favorite for underneath the eye, and also in other areas of the face as well, is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. Now it does say it's under eye powder, but I often use this on my nose, in between my brows as well, because it's just such an amazing product and it definitely does blur. Underneath the eyes, I do like to take my damp sponge and apply the powder underneath there. You can use your fingers if you want to. I just feel like I get a more seamless blend with my damp blending sponge, but obviously you use whatever method you want to. So I'm just adding a small amount of powder to my brush or rather to my sponge and then just dabbing that underneath the eye. 
that is just so blurred out. This is such good stuff. So after I've set underneath my eyes with the blurring powder, I'm then gonna set the rest of my face. Now, I don't do this every single time I wear makeup. It depends on how long I need my makeup to last throughout the day. And it also depends on my skin that day. If my skin is feeling slightly oilier when I wake up first thing in the morning, I will set my makeup in place. If it feels quite dry, I might not bother with the setting because I'd like my skin to look that little bit glowier throughout the day. Today, I'm gonna set it in place because you know, these are all my ultimate favorites, so I want to use them. I am gonna be using the Hourglass Veil, the translucent setting powder. What, which way is it? Oh, oh. there we go. <laughs> it's sort of feeling how I'm feeling today, a little bit upside down. So I'm gonna take my powder brush. Now this is from Brush Junkie. I'm not quite sure if you can get their brushes anymore. If you can't, just use a really lovely fluffy powder brush. And I just dot that in place. I've hardly got any powder on my brush whatsoever. And I'm just dotting that just in the areas that I feel like I need it. I never do my cheeks because my cheeks are a little bit drier than everywhere else. I would just do my T-zone. Now, if I needed that little bit more coverage, I would then go in with my Urban Decay Stay Naked The Fix. This is in the shade 30NN and I would use exactly the same brush, just go over that a little bit, knock off the excess and just go in to the area that I just feel like I need a little bit more coverage. If you need a lot more coverage, use a denser brush or your fingers. Then I'm gonna finish my eye look. I'm gonna pick up my Refer 14 brush, which is a much thinner, more accurate brush. I'm gonna hold it right down at the tip because I want to be accurate here. And I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is the first shade that we used as a transition shade. And I'm just dipping that in. There's no swirling in the pan. You don't need to with these Natasha Denona palettes. They are so super pigmented. You don't need a lot on your brush. So I'm gonna go from this outer edge and with a very, very light hand, I'm just feathering underneath that edge. And then when I need to be more accurate, I'm gonna hold it right at the tip so I can get more pressure on the brush and the pigment payoff will be slightly more. Now I'm gonna move on to my brows. You all know which product I'm gonna use. This is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. Just going to run through my brows with the spoolie just to stick them where I want them to be. And then start to outline the brow. I never worry about these looking boxy when I'm using this product. I always like to do the outline at the top and at the bottom and down this outer edge, but I leave this central portion because I feel like if you do the outline of this central portion, that's when it can look a little bit boxy and you have to spend a lot of time blending that out in order to make it look a little bit more natural. So I leave that portion out to begin with and I just fill in all of this section. Then I'm gonna use the spoolie to just blend all that together to make it look a little bit more natural. Then once you've spoolied, if you've missed any spots, you can just go then back in and just fill those in or define those areas a little bit more. Now, right at the very end, I will go into this central portion and right from the bottom, just flick up. I never go right up to the top of the brow hairs. That's one sure way of making your brows look boxy. So I would always just do the lower portion of the brow and then use your spoolie to blend that upwards, just like that. 
and then that looks so much more natural and it's going to look even more natural when the brow gel's in. So moving on to the brow gel, this is the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit and it is unbelievable. It's my ultimate favourite. It has slightly longer bristles on one side than the other. I'm going to use the longer ones first and then go in with the shorter ones. I pretty much switch and change depending on my mood. Sometimes I use the shorter one first, sometimes I use the longer one first, but the longer one gets more product in the brow immediately. So I feel like I need that today. So once I finish my brows, I'm gonna go straight in and give myself a lick of mascara. This is the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes and I'm gonna go straight into the volume side of this and really concentrate right at the base of the lashes. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go into the curl and length side and concentrate on the tips of my lashes. And then once the tips of the lashes are covered, I'm gonna go straight over again and give them a second coat with the curl and length side. Once I've completed my mascara, I'm moving on to my Maybelline City Bronzer and my Refa 05 brush. And I'm just gonna dip the tip in there, wiggle that under the cheekbone and then flick that up. Then I'm just going to outline my forehead with a little bit of color just to add a bit of dimension, not forgetting the temples. And I'm not using swiping motions, I'm more using dabbing motions for this, just to get the colour where I want it. Once that's done, for me this is the most important stage of this whole makeup. I'm going to take my number four brush from Refa and I'm going to dip that in to my ambient lighting blush in the shade Dim Infusion. I'm feeling like I want more of a peachy vibe today rather than a pinky vibe. So first of all, I'm gonna take it to the corner of the eye and I'm just gonna dab there and go upwards and on the temples. And then once I've got a lot less on the brush, I'm gonna to come towards the nose. Still staying really high up on the cheekbone. I'm not going down here because that would drag my face down a little bit. This just lifts everything up. So, so pretty. It's at this stage that if you've been a little bit heavy handed with your bronzer, with your blush, all this will be rectified. I'm now gonna use a finishing powder and my ultimate favorite finishing powder is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Now for this, I'm using exactly the same brush. So this is another one of my Refa number no. four brushes. A lot of people choose to use more of a powder brush that's less dense. I just feel like this works better for me. You use whichever brush you want. So I'm just gonna run through all three of these shades. You don't have to, you can use one specifically if you have a favorite. And then I'm just going to very lightly with my fingers right at the end of this brush, just do circular motions and really buff that powder into the skin. Paying close attention to where I've placed my bronzer and also where I place my blush if I've been a little bit heavy handed because this will buff that away and it will also just make everything, all the harsh lines if you've been heavy handed, just seem much, much more seamless. I'm also gonna take this down the nose a little bit even though I don't have any product on the nose. This just lifts the skin. Once I've finished my face, I'm gonna move on to lips and I'm actually gonna use my ultimate favorite cruelty-free lipstick for this because I absolutely love it and I just think it'll go so well with this look. 
These are from Charlotte Tilbury and they are her Hollywood lips and they are liquid lips, they are matte, they are just superb, super pigmented and I really like the applicator. So I think I'm gonna go for Platinum Blonde today because it's a little bit peachier in tone. Let me just show you the applicator. It's a really curved applicator. It's extremely precise, it hugs the lip, it allows you to actually line the lip without using a lip liner. It's just amazing. This isn't overly drying on me, but it's not hydrating either. So if you want a hydrating lip product, this is not going to be it. But I find it super pigmented. I find it very flattering. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. It lasts all day. How pretty is that colour? Now, usually I would leave it like that, unless I'm wanting more of a shine, but I just feel like, you know, this is a full face of my ultimate favourites of 2020, so I ought to add my ultimate favourite lip gloss of 2020 over the top. And this is what I would suggest you do if you want something a little bit more hydrating on the lip. Add a hydrating topper. Now this is from Hourglass and this is one of their Unreal lip glosses and it is stunning and I'm not quite sure why it won't focus, but hey. We're gonna carry on. This is in the shade Sublime and it seriously is, it's gorgeous. Really, really pretty. Have I used everything? Yes, I think I have. That is the end of the Best of 2020 series. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed creating it for you. Do let me know what your thoughts are on this series in the comments section below because if you've liked it, if you haven't liked it, have your say because the majority will rule and um, I may do this again next year if the majority have really, really liked it. So definitely have your say. I hope you are having a fantastic beginning to your 2021. I wish you nothing but love and happiness and health for the coming year. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Bye everyone.